Jordan Atkinson. Okay, um, well, let's start off with uh, E4. Um, okay, played E3. When we get a French defense, no, a, a Queen's Indian setup. I don't know if this has a specific name, but uh, after I played D4, it could be considered a Queen's Indian. I could play uh, C4. That would look very much. That is a Queen's Indian, I guess. So let's see. He's uh, threatening to take on E4. Let's defend it. Just uh, develop my knight normally in castle, it looks like. <laughs> Plays f6. Uh, well, my knight's in the way, so I don't have the check. Uh, looks like a very strange way of playing, though, doesn't it? Let's see what he has in mind. Wants to give up the bishop pair. And maybe he's going to attack my uh, C pawn. Maybe even win it. Um, so I can, can I? Can I push on with uh, E5 here? Pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes. So if I push on with E5, he might take the knight first. But then when I take back, I'm hitting his rook in the corner. So that gains a tempo. So pawn here, bishop takes, queen takes. He does something to save the... Uh, knight and then I can I can take so I think I can push on I think I should push on open things up while his king is still in the center and his knights are undeveloped he's played a lot of pawn moves here and this will force the opening of at least one line I can either take I can I can take one of the two pawns if he doesn't take and avoids then I can take at least Okay, so which pawn should I take? Probably this pawn. If I take the F pawn, that just helps his knight develop, whereas the pawn on F6 is in his way. Okay, so he's not um, ganging up on my C pawn like they sometimes do in this position. Um, I could play um, a4 and bishop to a3 to annoy his queen a little bit. Need to get this bishop out, and I don't know, you know, if I, it's a little bit slow to get to f4. I would have to play like uh, bishop e3, queen d2, and then, then bishop to f4. But here I get the bishop on an active square immediately, and I'm controlling this diagonal with the pawns. So he steps aside and uh, lines up with this queen on this battery. So I can, um, of course, I don't want to move the knight in such a way that allows him to checkmate me. I want to get in this move. Um, um, d5, but I don't think it's playable right now. How about uh, rook, rook e1 and bishop to e4? That would win the bishop. Especially if he gets all aggressive and plays something like uh, pawn to g5, threatening to chase my knight away and checkmate me. I can interpose my bishop here, and he can't block on that diagonal, and he can't move the queen anywhere that defends the bishop. So probably he should um, defend the bishop now, or cover the e4 square. Oh, well that defends the bishop. That's interesting. Um, I still think this is a good move. Destroy the battery and his good bishop there. Bishop to e4. Is there something better? Bishop e4. He plays queen takes. And uh, I am sacking, sacking a pawn there, aren't I? Okay. Let's, uh, let's bring my queen over here. Um, I wasn't convinced the pawn sack was any good, and um, and I might still be able to play bishop e4. Um, 
and with the queen on the b file here maybe this pawn to c5 move is an idea to open things up pawn to c5 might have been a move anyway but i think it'll be even stronger uh, well maybe after rook b1 c5 takes and i'm, I'm taking whatever ends up on the uh, on the b7 square Yeah, so let's go ahead and do this now. Where is his queen going anyway? I guess it goes to... Uh, I guess it goes to e6. You know, I wonder if I had that move before... No, no, he had the ability to take on c4, so I was never trapping the queen. So unfortunately, now when I push c4, <laughs> his, his queen is uh, kind of in the way. Let's see, I can poke the queen first like this. Push it off that diagonal. And then I can play c5. It takes with a knight, I take with the bishop, and the pawn is pinned, of course. So I can go ahead and push that right away. And then maybe bring some rooks over to uh, finish off my attack on the uh, opened up king side. Hopefully, opened up king side. Good example of getting your pieces out while your opponent's uh, pieces are still on the back rank. Yeah, so he plays there with his queen, trying to put it to an active spot, maybe looking across and defending a long. Um, this diagonal, but I think it's a little, a little too late for that. I mean, he can push on with e4. I can drop my knight into uh, d4. Uh, if he does nothing, I have this fork here picking up a piece. Pawn to uh, c6. The fork can't take. He can push his pawn. Uh, well, then I still have the fork. And he can't take with the knight. So he probably needs to move the uh, king or the knight. Yeah. And then I can take, and that will open up a line here. Is it better to do that? Now if I push, he can just move his knight here. And I take it off. Yeah, let's see. Where does the knight go if I push? It doesn't want to go here. Might just retreat though. I mean, as terrible as it sounds, if it just retreats, then these this uh, it's all closed up over here. If I take, he can take with the knight. Uh, if he brings his knight forward, though, I was thinking, say I push and he plays knight to c5. I would just take it, and then bring my rook over here to the b file, and because that opens up the b file, but. If I push and he moves the knight away, what is my follow-up? My follow-up is to bring the other pawn in. Yeah, I think I like that better than taking, and that actually brings his knight over to a better position. So this pushes his knight away from defense, and I still have another pawn here that I can use to uh, open things up with. wonder if I should bother defending this pawn first or lining up with the rooks. I think maybe it's worthwhile. Rook b1. Okay, well, I have to respond to that. So my idea was to go here, and I can hop into... Uh, hop into e6. Looks like a pretty good square. If this pawn pushes forward, I can take with the queen defending the knight. So uh, let's go here. Let's uh, chase that rook to a worse square. Put some pressure on the b-pawn. On the c-pawn. And then I'm wondering, oh, you know, that knight was just hanging there. Ah, that was silly. Let's back. If I look at this position, 
Yeah, he played he played 97. I can just take it. <laughs> yeah, I was too wrapped up in my own plans there to notice uh, what a terrible blunder he had made. So he, his only move then is Rick to uh, D8, which he didn't play. Okay, I'm going to take that. Don't ask me twice. Yep, so he's continuing his slow motion attack with the pawns here. Um, so now if I play c5, he takes, I can bring my queen in and checkmate him. That's kind of pretty. And if he doesn't, I will take his pawn. Yeah, so he attacks my bishop instead. Let's see, can I ignore that and just take? Take this pawn, and I'm threatening to push forward, and that is a checkmate. <laughs> pawn, to, uh, pawn to b7 is checkmate. And if I take, and he takes back, and the queen comes in. So this has got to be winning. Although his rook, I have to admit, his rook on this square is, okay, that is checkmate. So anyway, kind of a pretty checkmate. The uh, pawns are delivering the checkmate and covering the escape square, except for the knight, which is covering the, uh, the uh, d8 square. So I think I will uh, upload this one just for the cuteness factor. Also a good example of how to punish someone who's not developing and just moving their pawns in the opening. Okay, see you guys later. Bye.